Good morning. Today I'm going to explain how you can put a twin turbo setup or compound turbo as correctly called on your Dodge Cummings with new exhaust for under a thousand dollars. This is what I did. I used my stock turbo, it's my upper first, and I bought a cheap Chinese knockoff turbo that I use secondly. This setup has 150,000 miles on it and one of the turbos is going bad so today I'm going to replace it. I'm going to replace a secondary turbo with a Garrett nice turbo and what I'm going to do is take everything apart then I'm going to put it back together and explain how I did things. All you need is basic welding skills and a little bit of time and a little bit of thought and you can have a setup that you will want on any Dodge you ever own. So here we are with it all stripped down. The first thing you'll notice is you have to take the exhaust manifold off and turn it upside down. This is pretty standard. Everything easy to get to. Um, I reused my old gaskets and I had no problems with leaks. Like I say, the system had 150,000 miles on it. Um, not fine for me. Second thing is you'll find that your heater hose for your heat inside the truck will run in the way. What I did is I cut it. I used one of the 90s from the line and I bought a piece of line ran it out around out of the way very simple the exhaust as you notice what I had said it was I put new exhaust on at the same time the exhaust will made up the way your stock is and I cut it off there's not a lot of room in here but I cut you can buy down pipes but I cut the exhaust off and I re-welded it so it would match up with the bottom turbo. Um, and as a carpenter once told me, measure twice, cut once. You have to plan what you're doing, but it will fit. The If you can see it down there, the return oil for the second turbo, I drilled a hole in the side of the oil pan and I silver soldered a barb fitting in it. Um, you know, a good epoxy or thread it in or however you think is good will work. Uh, I got from my oil filter, I took a line, here I have my oil pressure gauge and then my second oil feed for my second turbo. Um, like I say, it's just a matter of planning. You know, all this is done by figuring. This is what you pay somebody $2,000 for because they already figured it out for you. But if you use your brain a little bit, yeah, you can do it. So here are my turbos off. Uh, as you can see, my downpipe is here. What I did was I took a three inch mains rolling bent 90. I cut it off real short. I bought an adapter plate with just a hole in the back and then I welded it on there. Um, down here I have a T3 to a T4 adapter and I simply bolted on the second turbo. Uh, my new turbo is going to be a T6 so I'm going to have to redo that a little bit. Um, it may be difficult to picture with them sitting on the ground here how they actually go in, but uh, there's your um, where it bolts up to the exhaust manifold and it sits on there, and the second one hangs off of it. Uh, once you start putting it in there, you'll realize how they kind of got to go. You have to spin the housings around a little bit, which you can do without a whole lot of trouble. This the this is actually hitting. This turbo is actually starting to hit. And like I said, these are Chinese turbos. Um, they're not Garrett's or anything else. Uh, if you want to, you can type in Google 
turbos from China and you can order them straight from China yourself. Uh, they have 150,000 miles on it. I don't know how I can complain. Uh, I did a rebuild on the truck um, at 400,000. Before that it was completely stock. Um, the only thing I had was a lower cost three position tuner uh, that you need a little bit extra fuel boost. Other than that, I drove these turbos for about 100,000 miles on a completely stock engine and they worked great for me. Um, you can go ahead and what I did was bolt the top turbo on and start planning from there. Um, anyway, plan, plan, plan. I did this plan on doing it in two days a weekend it ended up taking me three a lot of my time was spent going back and forth because I needed this I needed that I need a 190 I needed this fitting but it's all learning experience now I know what to do that's why I'm trying to share a little bit so someone else can try it so here's my downpipe I have my T6 flange welded onto the end of my downpipe and that's what I'm going to connect my new turbo to. Uh, my original plan was to use this flange because it has a V-band connection and that would give me some mobility to turn back and forth and hook up to the exhaust. Originally when I did this, the exhaust was put on after the turbo. so. It was easy but when you change something in the middle you change the position and all of a sudden the exhaust doesn't fit uh, the four inch is not leaving me enough room if I had it to do over I would have ordered a three inch and put on there um, I don't feel like waiting three days so I think I'm just gonna make the other one work uh, we'll see what happens Okay, here are my turbos bolted in place. Um, look pretty massive. Uh, everything bolted up pretty good. The only concerns are is my air conditioning line here seems to be hitting a little bit since this turbo is a little bit bigger. I'm probably going to just try to bend it out of the way. Um, one other thing I wanted to point out while we're at this stage is this is an oil return line for your stock turbo. Um, it will not reach. Uh, the new setup so what I did was it's metal pipe and then it's got a rubber fitting connecting it to the block for the return and if you can see underneath here I cut the pipe off here and simply run an oil resistant line rubber line down to that so that's how I got my return line for the top turbo the oil return um, think it's kind of heavy and what I'm gonna try to do is make a bracket for the back of it just to add some support to it so it's not all just hanging off the exhaust manifold uh, when you bolt these things together and you lift it up put it in there you'll realize they're not light <laughs> one other thing I'd like to add is um, as you can see this turbo has got a v-band on the housing and I can move it um, I left it loose for the reasoning is once I start putting my pipes together I'll have some adjustment this other turbo has uh, a c-clip on the back of it and it's not so easy I've popped them out before and they're hard to get back in um, one day I was said I was going to invest in a huge set of uh, spring pliers but anyway um, I set the top turbo on there by itself easier and then you get the position lined up here's your down piece and as you can see that's my bottom turbo line coming right there and all I have to do is put a 90 in there and I connect it to the intercooler um, but figuring out how these pipes go I'm doing a little bit of planning is part of the thing because what it looks like a lot of room but once you get started in there adding pipes uh, your room gets used up real quick and you have to just manage how you're going to use everything but it can be done. So here is, here is my exhaust. 
that I just got done making. My old one had a four inch V band and the uh, new turbo has a five. So I made a little adapter for it. As you can see, it's offset. Uh, this is so it's best in my bay there. Um, and it may look a little bit messy, but it will work. Um, I'm not a professional welder, so best I can do. It's one of those things I said, basic welding skills. If you don't know how to weld, you know, you can buy yourself a little welder at Home Depot or whatever for 300 bucks. Good time to teach yourself. Okay, we have all our oil supply lines hooked up. Um, the oil supply line coming off of the back of it here and coming around to the other turbo, second turbo. The oil drain, like I said, coming out to the, uh, the original factory. You can see it there. Um, and we have our, I turned my um, V-band connection off my uh, stock turbo down. And I'm going to put this elbow in down there. This is the one at the bottom, so this will be the one I'm doing first. Uh, one thing I learned was to run a weld bead around and grind it down to help hold the boots because I had a problem with them slipping off just regular pipe. Um, that way it gives them something to bite down on. Uh, but at any rate, we're going to stick that pipe on next. Okay, we got our bottom pipe in there coming up to our from our intercooler to our top turbo. Uh, this is my pipe for going to go for the air supply. Um, it's tight fit, but everything will fit. This is my 90 to. I'm gonna make a U bend to go around to the from the second to the first turbo, and hopefully everything's gonna work out good. Okay, we just about got her. Uh, everything's in place. Um, got all my feeds, lines, everything like that hooked back up. One thing I wanted to point out that I did with this Dodge is originally I couldn't figure out how to do the fresh air intake. Um, if you notice, I got it up here front, but if any of you have a Dodge, you say that's where the battery goes. I uh, found, I live in the Washington DC area, we got four seasons. I found in the summertime, uh, I would lose horsepower and fuel mileage, and I realized that it was just sucking up all the heat from the engine. So what I did is I made a little bracket, and I cut the old box out, welded the bracket on, I put my battery back here, and then my cable, your cable will simply fit across the back. You just wire tie it across the back instead of the front. And you get the fresh air up here where it sucks fresh air off of the front of the engine before it gets to the engine. And everything works good. Um, what I'm going to do is it's uh, Sunday. I'm out of time. And... I need my truck for work. I use my truck for work. Uh, and if you notice here, both of these are four inch. I have the pipe. I was going to make a new bin for it. But I think for now, my old one is matching up pretty good. And I'm just going to stick my old one on there, which is three inch. And until I get some more time, I'm going to make up the four inch. But that's all I need to complete the system. Okay, there everything is back in its place. You got the turbos in place, all the piping. Looks like it's full now. Uh, there's your battery in the back, cable going across the back, air filter up front. Um, should be good to go. We'll give her a start up and check for oil leaks, make sure everything's tight and good, and we'll be finished for the day. So here it is all done. You have your fresh air up front, your it battery in the back. Uh, it's a tight fit once it's all in there. Um, 
but it can be done. There's a lot of different combinations of turbos people are running. You can search the different forms to see what's best for you. I use my truck for work. I tow about 20% of the time. Um, when I had my stock engine, I ran. I didn't go over 40 pounds. I kept it around 40 pounds of boost. Uh, just for the sake, they say the valve springs are only good for about 45 pounds stock valve springs. I didn't want to blow head gasket, so I just ran it like that. Never had a problem. Makes a big difference in horsepower, instant boost and fuel economy. Um, when I rebuilt my engine, you can see the head studs sticking up there. I put head studs, 110 pound valve springs, heavy duty push rods, a whole bit in there. Make a real nice heavy duty engine. Uh, the only other thing you have to be kind of careful of is with the Chinese or the knockoff turbos that you actually get what you're paying for, be sure you make verify the wheel size because sometimes they'll advertise things and they aren't quite that. They, um, other than that, you know, I hope this helps somebody out with their build or with their questions. Uh, be sure to subscribe. I'm going to be doing uh, a fuller transmission swap, hopefully before the summer's out. I got a six-speed in there now, Dodge, and... Uh, I want to upgrade to a fuller and I have a lot of the parts and I'm going to make a video of that and possibly give you some ideas, some help on that. Thank you for watching.